This is the Surviving the Last Days podcast, and I am the host, Ashley Shante. Welcome back, brothers and sisters in Christ, to another episode. Appreciate you guys being here. So I just want to get right off into the topic since um, I'm really not going to make this uh, uh, any longer than 30 minutes. Um, Probably won't even go that long. So I appreciate your ear and your time. And this is very important to, um, you know, listen to me today and have your thoughts and listen to my thoughts. So um, today's episode is called... um, making your offerings to God. And so like, I know as Christ believers, as followers of the most high, the true living God, we sometimes get distracted. Like I can think of a few distractions I had this week. Um, I'm sure you could think of a few distractions as well, but, um, I know that we shouldn't only make our offerings to God, when we feel like we have time or when we feel like we have sinned and we feel guilty, so we want to make an offering. I know that, um, like in the ancient biblical times, there was a, um, a tabernacle or a tent of worship. And this was in like Moses time frame, And, um, there would be a priest there and, then the the people of the nation would come in there and make sacrifices as well. And then there was the annual atonement where the priests would make sacrifices on behalf of the nation of Israel. Um, and they made those offerings because they have sinned. Um, but I think that we should make daily offerings to God. And, and although we don't have to sacrifice animals, um, thank God, because... Our Messiah um, is kind of like our buffer to the most uh, high God. And he He is um, the sacrificial lamb to where he was the sacrifice. And he, he made his offering up of his body and his blood. That was the ultimate sacrifice. And that made atonement for our sins. But I still think as individual Christ followers... And to be like Christ and exemplify his example of offering up his body, we need to make sacrifices individually. And that means that even though we might want to do something with our time for (laughs) ourselves, we should make our offering to God. And what are what would be considered our offerings in modern times? Uh, Well, we don't have to kill a dead. We don't have to kill a cat or find a raccoon or anything. No, 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 no. Um, Our offerings could be our time. We could sacrifice our time or or deliver our time or donate our time to the most high God instead of to this woman we like or this man we like or instead of our entertainment um, sitcoms that we like or... um, and you don't only have to do that on sa- the Sabbath, which today is the Sabbath, Shabbat Shalom. Um, but you don't only have to make your offerings on, um, I think that prayer is an offering that you should do daily. That's a daily offering. Um, but time, offering your time, your energy, um, your resources even, um, you know, making sure you buy the material if you have to, that you need to advance your education in uh, Bible teachings and truths. Um, that That's an example of offering resources. Um, using your mouth for prayer, like I said, or using your mouth to make a public declaration about Christ, using your mouth to make a testimony. Your mouth can be an offering, uh, the fruit of your lips could be an offering um let's look up a scripture hebrews the book of hebrews chapter 13 i think it's verse 5 if i'm not mistaken well i shall find out let's see um 
chapter 13, verse 5. Oh, well, I guess that's not it. Um, so what was I looking for? Chapter 13. Oh, yeah. Chapter Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Through him, let us always offer to God a sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips that make public declaration to his name. Um. Uh, Moreover, do not forget to do good and to share what you have with others, for God is well pleased with such sacrifices. So that I added on verse 16 and 17. So yeah, again, the fruit of our lips can be an offering by offering praise, prayer, making a public declaration and testimony um, to be a witness. Amen. As we are supposed to bear witness to others who may not know the gospel and, um, it's important that we make our offerings to God daily. And I'm going to also say it's important that we make our fruit of the lips offerings uh, anytime we can when we get in front of an individual that may not have the kingdom first mindset. You know, I know sometimes we get around people in the world and we don't mention that we are a Christ follower. We don't broadcast it. We don't wear it on our sleeves, but actually we should. Um, because isn't it important to get as many of our brothers and sisters in knowledge of everlasting life and to change the ways that they have gone according to the world? Because ultimately it's beneficial for them. Even though you may be around a person at your job, they smoke weed or she, she, she smokes weed. Um, they, they really like the most ungodliest music. Um, they, they participate in a uh, reckless behavior, whether it be sexual immorality or anything. They might be in all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, this is what's in the world, but if you being a person who does have a spiritual side and who is have the heart to make a dedication to Christ and you work beside that person and you like that person and that person has a great personality and you're good co-workers together, why not try to put some sprinkle a little spiritual influence in their life? Make them think about God. Put God in the forefront of some conversations. <laughs> you know, I know I, I, I have in the past to witness to people use riddles. <laughs> okay. There's one riddle I like that I learned from high school. And I use it on people to make them think about God. Just to put the thought of God in their life. And then I I will sprinkle a scripture in a conversation just so naturally, like it's just, it flows with the conversation that it makes them think again, spiritually about kingdom things. So we need to be a spiritual influence to others and our offerings can be a spiritual influence to others and fortify our faith as well, individually, which we need to do as Christ followers because we all fall short of the glory of God and also introduce um, who the true God is to others, you know? And allow our light to shine in their life instead of going by their pace, which is the pace of the world. But the riddle, if you guys want to know, is um, what's greater than God? Poor people have it. Rich people don't want it. And if you eat it, you'll die. And the answer is nothing. Because if you're a Christ follower, automatically you're going to know nothing. Nothing is greater than God. If you're a worldly person... You're going to be like, ah, I don't know, because I'm so distracted by this and that. What is the answer? And then it's nothing. It's nothing wrong. is greater than God. And then you, they learn that. They learn that and they be like, yep, yeah, that's right. That's right. Just introduce God in daily conversations. And if that person pulls away, they have that right. And you can't be afraid of losing them because whoever loves mother, brother, sister, daughter, boyfriend cousin more than me 
will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's scripture. So you got to be willing to lose some people if you can't bring them into the spiritual realm, you know? Okay. Um, but make your daily offerings. Uh, start off with prayer in the morning. We are human. We're going to get distracted. Um, you know, I really think it's important to congregate with people who can send you a scripture every now and then to fortify your faith. I think my Bible study teacher is that person in my life. You know, we're kind of around the same age and she's a woman, I'm a woman. And um, there, she will pretty periodically send me a random scripture that is so on point um, for whatever I'm going through. And she don't even know what I'm going through. It just fortifies my faith. So having a person, people, group, congregation, um, it works if they can having that outside influence always in your life to remind you, if you will, of what you, what your deliverance this to remind you your deliverance is ahead to fortify your faith. Um, it's good to have those kind of people around. Um, so I think that's what my Bible study teacher does for me it doesn't have to be a lot of people it can be one person or it can be an app yeah it can be an app because i have the key kjv bible app on my phone and it 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 sends me a scripture or notification for a scripture every morning and every night and it also includes a prayer and devotional every morning and every night and i and I, I get it and, oh, let me go to my notifications and read the prayer and read the scripture, meditate on it. Okay, I've done that. And another notification comes at night. So that's, that's my spiritual influencer in my life too. <laughs> okay. So um, make your offerings, you know, don't use your time in vain or on uselessness. Don't use your energy in vain or on uselessness, your resources in vain. Um, those are your offerings. So use them for the purpose of furthering the kingdom of Yahweh, our Father in heaven. Amen. And I think that sums up everything I wanted to say here. I ain't got to say no more. <laughs> Again, this is the Surviving the Last Days podcast. If you are a returning listener, Thank you for keep coming back. If you're a new listener, I hope you like it enough to come back. And um, you can follow my Instagram page at hashtag surviving the last days podcast. Um, what else? You can follow the YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. Hashtag surviving the last days on YouTube with Ashley Shantae. So those are your two things that you can follow and I would greatly appreciate that I will talk to you guys later enjoy the rest of your sabbath bye bye for now